Welcome to Exam Coach Pro. Get ready for three complete FAA Part 107 practice tests, each in two parts of 30 questions. These tests are designed to mirror the real exam so you can prep better to score higher. Let's get started. Regulations, remote pilot eligibility. What is the minimum age to obtain a remote pilot certificate under Part 107? A, 14 years old. B, 15 years old. C, 16 years old. D, 18 years old. Correct answer, C. Applicants must be at least 16, proficient in English, and pass the knowledge test. Regulations, alcohol use. How long must a remote pilot wait after consuming alcohol before operating a UAS? A, four hours. B, eight hours. C, 12 hours. D, 24 hours. Correct answer, B, FAA prohibits flight within eight hours of drinking alcohol or with a blood alcohol content of 0 0.04 or greater. Regulations, right of way. Which statement is correct when operating near manned aircraft? A, UAS must always yield right of way to manned aircraft. B, UAS and manned aircraft share right of way responsibilities. C, UAS may continue if below 200 feet A, G, L. D. UAS has right of way if equipped with remote eye. D. Correct answer. A. Remote pilots must always yield to manned aircraft. Regulations. Maximum altitude. What is the maximum altitude permitted under Part 107 without a waiver? A. 200 feet. A. G. L. B. 300 feet. A. G. L. C. 400 feet. A. G. L. D. 500 feet. AGL. Correct answer, C. Small. UAS may fly up to 400 feet above ground level or within 400 feet of a structure. Airspace sectional chart class C shelf. Refer to figure one. Class C sectional chart shelf. What does 44 over 17 indicate? A. Floor 1,700 feet. MSL. Ceiling 4,400 feet. MSL. B. Floor 1,700 feet AGL. Ceiling 4,400 feet AGL. C. Floor 4,400 feet. Ceiling 17,000 feet MSL. D. Floor surface. Ceiling 4,400 feet MSL. Correct answer. A. Sectional altitudes are always expressed in MSL, not AGL. This shelf begins at 1,700 feet MSL and extends to 4,400 feet MSL. Weather visibility. What is the minimum visibility required for UAS flight under Part 107? Darks A, one statute mile, B, two statute miles, C, three statute miles, D, five statute miles. Correct answer, C. The remote pilot in command must have at least three statute miles visibility from the control station. Weather METAR interpretation refer to the METAR example. What does this METAR report? A. Winds 200 degrees at 15 knots, gusting 22. Visibility 5 statute miles. Haze broken clouds at 3,000 feet. B. Winds 200 degrees at 15 knots, gusting 22. Visibility 5 nautical miles. Haze scattered at 300 feet. C. Winds calm. Unlimited visibility. Scattered at 30,000 feet. D. Winds 2, 2, 0 degrees at 15 knots steady. Visibility, 5 statute miles. Overcast, 3,000 feet. Correct answer, A. This report shows winds at 2, 0, 0 degrees, 15 knots, gusting 22, five statute miles visibility, haze, and broken clouds at 3,000 feet. Regulations, medical fitness. A remote pilot is experiencing dizziness during operations. What action should be taken? A, continue if flying under 200 feet. A, G, L, B, continue if no people are nearby. C, cease operations immediately. D, continue only with a visual observer present. Correct answer, C. The FAA 
requires that the remote pilot in command must not operate a UAS if they know or suspect any condition that would interfere with safe operation. Regulations, waiver process, which must be included in a Part 107 waiver application. A. Pilot's total flight hours. B. Copy of pilot's insurance. C. Description of the operation and safety justification. D. List of visual observer names. Correct answer. C. Waiver requests must describe the proposed operation and explain how safety will be maintained. Regulations. Night operations. What is required for legal night flight under Part 107? A. ATC clearance. B. Anti-collision lights visible for three statute miles and night training. C. A waiver issued before 2021. D. Aircraft registration only. Correct answer, B. Since 2021, night operations require anti-collision lights and completion of night training. Regulations, pre-flight responsibility. What must the remote pilot in command ensure before flight? A. File a flight plan with ATC. B. A visual observer is always present. C. UAS condition is safe for operation. D. Waiver is filed. Correct answer. C. The remote pilot in command must ensure the UAS is in safe operating condition and that the environment is assessed for hazards. Airspace Class D. Airspace before operating in Class D airspace, a pilot must. A. File a notum with the FAA. B. Obtain ATC authorization. C. Stay below 200 feet. AGL. D. Notify law enforcement. Correct answer. B. ATC authorization is required in Class Bravo, Charlie, Delta, and Surface Echo airspace. Airspace. Temporary flight restrictions. How can a pilot avoid TFR violations? A. Watch local news. B. Check FAA TFR listings or the Before You Fly app before flight. C. Call airport security. D. File waiver requests. Correct answer. B. The FAA requires the remote PIC to confirm that no temporary flight restrictions affect the planned area of operation by checking FAA resources such as the TFR database or Before You Fly app before commencing flight. Regulations. Lost link procedures. What must be established before flight? A. ATC acknowledgement. B. Recovery and contingency plan. C. Visual Observer Takeover Process. D. NTSB Notification. Correct answer. B. The remote pilot in command must plan recovery procedures in case of lost link. Operations. Pre-flight crew briefing. What should a remote PC include in a pre-flight crew briefing? A. Weather forecasts only. B. Roles, responsibilities, and emergency procedures. C. ATC clearance codes. D. Drone maintenance schedule. Correct answer, B. CRM requires that all crew members understand their role and actions in normal and emergency operations before flight. Nice work, you've made it halfway. If these videos are helping you, please take a moment to like and subscribe. Your support makes it possible for us to keep creating free, high quality practice tests. Thank you, now let's continue. Regulations, category one, operations over people. What is required for a UAS to qualify for Category 1? Operations over people? A. Less than 0.55 pounds and no exposed rotating parts. B. Less than 55 pounds with anti-collision lights. C. FAA issued airworthiness certificate. D. Remote ID broadcast only. Correct answer. A. Category 1 applies to drones under 0.55 pounds with no exposed rotating parts capable of laceration. Regulations. Category 2. Kinetic energy limit. What is the maximum allowed impact energy for Category 2 operations over people? A. 25 foot-pounds. B. Unlimited. C. 0.55 foot-pounds. D. 11 foot-pounds. Correct answer. D. Category 2. Limits injury, risk to 11 foot-pounds or less on impact. Regulations. Category 3. Sustained flight. When is sustained flight over people permitted under Category 3? A. 
only during daylight operations, b. only if below 200 feet, a, g, l, c. if people are inside stationary vehicles or covered structures, d. always, regardless of conditions. Correct answer, c. Category 3 allows operations over people if they are protected by stationary vehicles or structures. Regulations, Category 4, Certification Requirement. What must a UAS have for Category 4 operations over people? A. FAA-issued airworthiness certificate with no restrictions. B. Remote ID module, only. C. Less than 0.55 pounds takeoff weight. D. Waiver from the FSDO. Correct answer. A. Category 4 requires an FAA-issued airworthiness certificate permitting such operations. Regulations, Visual Observer Requirement When is a visual observer required? A. Always, regardless of conditions. B. Only when the remote pilot cannot maintain visual line of sight alone. C. Only at night. D. Only in controlled airspace. Correct answer. B. A visual observer is only mandatory when the remote pilot cannot maintain visual line of sight alone. Otherwise, the VO is optional. Regulations. Effective communication. What must exist between the remote pilot and visual observer during operations? A. FAA radio link. B. Effective communication at all times. C. Cellular connection with ATC. D. Hand signals only. Correct answer. B. The RPIC and VO must maintain effective communication to ensure situational awareness. Airspace, ADSB out. Can a small UAS transmit ADSB out under Part 107? A. Yes, if under 55 pounds. B. Yes, but only with FAA authorization. C. Always permitted in class. G. D. Only when operating beyond visual line of sight. Correct answer. B. ADSB. Out is prohibited unless specifically authorized by the FAA. Airspace. Military operations area. What is true regarding military operations areas? A. UAS operations are prohibited. B. Operations are permitted with caution. Contacting the controlling agency is recommended. C. Operations are only permitted at night. D. FAA waiver is required for entry. Correct answer, B. MOAs are not prohibited, but may contain hazardous activity. Caution and coordination with the controlling agency is advised. Airspace, maximum elevation figure. Refer to sectional chart, maximum elevation figure. What does the 107 in a grid represent? A, minimum safe altitude in AGL. B, maximum elevation figure. 10,700 feet MSL, C, Class E floor altitude, D, VFR corridor minimum altitude. Correct answer, B, maximum elevation figures show the highest obstacle rounded up, expressed in hundreds of feet, MSL. Weather, TAF interpretation, regard the following TAF. What is expected temporarily between 1600 and 2000 Zulu? A, calm winds and clear skies. B. Two statute miles visibility with thunderstorms and overcast at 1,500 feet. Cumulonimbus. C. Fog with one-half statute mile visibility. D. Overcast skies at 8,000 feet. Correct answer. B. Tempo indicates temporary two statute miles visibility, thunderstorms, and cumulonimbus overcast at 1,500 feet. Weather. Altimeter error. If the altimeter is set to 29.72 instead of 30.02, the indicated altitude will be A. 300 feet higher than actual B. 300 feet lower than actual C. 600 feet higher than actual D. No effect on indicated altitude Correct answer A. A lower setting than actual causes the altimeter to read higher than the true altitude Performance, battery temperature. Refer to the battery temperature chart. Which condition most reduces lithium battery performance? A, 20 degrees Celsius. B, 0 degrees Celsius. C, 
35 degrees Celsius. D. 25 degrees Celsius. Correct answer. B. Cold temperatures reduce battery output and endurance significantly. Performance. Payload endurance. Refer to figure 4, payload versus endurance chart. What is the endurance reduction when a 2-pound payload reduces endurance from 20 minutes to 12 minutes? A. 25%. B. 40%. C. 60%. D. 75%. Correct answer. B. Endurance reduction equals 8 divided by 20, which is 40%. Performance. CG. Forward shift. If payload is mounted too far forward, what effect is likely? A. Nose heavy flight with reduced climb performance. B. Tail heavy flight, improved maneuverability. C. Improved stability and climb rate. D. No effect on handling. Correct answer. A. A forward center of gravity causes nose heavy flight and reduces climb performance. Regulations. Accident reporting threshold. Under Part 107, which of the following accidents requires an immediate telephone notification to the NTSB instead of just the FAA? A. Any battery fire during flight. B. Collision that causes serious injury or death. C. Property damage, less than $500. D. Minor injury requiring only first aid. Correct answer. B. While the FAA requires reports within 10 days for serious injury or greater than $500 damage, accidents causing death or serious injury require immediate notification to the NTSB. Thanks for watching Exam Coach Pro. Don't forget to hit subscribe and check out the next video to keep practicing, just like the real FAA exam. Or explore the full playlist for all 180 questions and gouge study sheet. And remember, you can download the complete exam pack at examcoach.pro.